just came down from MLB.com. I get the news service. Roberto Osuna has been transferred to the AAA Buffalo Bisons, uh, essentially uh, on the field wise, getting his comeback to the major league started. What uh, <laughs> he's going to be received in a, a various ways throughout the rest of the season, perhaps for the rest of his career. What do you do with this guy, Mike? Well, I mean, it's, it's a difficult situation, but it's not something – and I heard some, someone make this comparison. If you remember, Eraldis Chapman had similar issues in Cincinnati uh, before he was traded to the Yankees. And when he was traded to the Yankees, he was traded for a bag of balls. He, well, it, wasn't, it wasn't a lot. And then once he reestablished his value and got off to a new start and proved that he wasn't, uh, they wasn't going to do what he did uh, in Cincinnati again, um, he went to the Cubs for a bevy and then ended up re-signing with the Yankees. With Asuna, I mean, he's, he's a very valuable pitcher. I mean, we, I can't. I can't defend anything that he has reportedly done, but it's still under adjudication. But I mean, in terms of the just baseball, in terms of him reestablishing his career, I don't know how he does it in Toronto. I mean, I think the negative perception of him with, with this current situation, I think will force the organization to move him. but I think they want to move him and get as much as they can for him. And I don't know if they can do that this year before July 31st. Cause I don't think he comes back before July 31st. So, and he won't clear the, uh, the waiver deadline before August 31st. So this might be a winter meetings type of, deal to trade Osuna but I think I I think he's I think he possibly has pitched his last game Mm -hmm. in a Blue Jay uniform Mm -hmm. the question is do we get a second chance is there an opportunity or an avenue for redemption and that's something that people have to uh, reconcile within themselves we know that Toronto socially is a is a head of is a head of the curve when it uh, compared to a lot of uh, American markets, it's just it's just the way it is. Not all of them. I mean, you go to a place like San Francisco or out in, out on the coast. Uh, there's a bit more uh, New York. There's a bit more of a you know a social understanding. A little bit some of the things that happen um, in, in these markets are not necessarily accepted, uh, but there are repercussions to it. You look at the Josh. Hater scenario, uh, all those disgusting tweets that he put out when he was a 17 year old. There are, there are people who want to skewer him and want his career to be over because of that. And then there are others who believe that there are others who believe that that was from the past and he's a new guy. I have my own opinion. I, 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 I could share that opinion and then I will be labeled, you know, either either being way too overboard and, and being sensitive or, um, turning a blind eye to somebody's uh, terrible past, uh, whether it be on social media or not. Mike, this is the challenge right now uh, for, for not only baseball teams and, and baseball culture, but for fans to, to you know, be human about some of these things that happen. I know they're terrible, but, you know, what, what do you do? Is this it for R- Roberto Osuna because of this? Is he done now? Does he have to leave baseball? Should he be – castigated or, or, or uh, exiled for the rest of his life? I mean, some people believe that, Mike. Well, I, I, I mean, I think there are teams that will give him second chances, and I think that eventually will lead to him go, like As I said, I, I don't think he'll ever pitch for the Blue Jays again, um, you know, because, I, I, I mean, if he comes up late in the year, I mean, I think the reception will be ugly uh, as opposed to the reception that Hader got in Milwaukee, which was a standing ovation, which I'm yeah. still shaking my head at. But, I, you know, I, I don't know, like, in terms of the reception that an organization or a fan base, um, you know, uh, the consistency of it. I mean, in, in, in hockey, you know, Slava Voyanov is – it's going to be very tough for him to get a second chance after what happened with his situation in Los Angeles. And, you know, some people think he should not, not be allowed to come back in the NHL, but in the in, in, in NFL or in major league baseball, there are situations where players have incidents off the field and they're given second chances. So I think Osuna falls in that category, but as for whether it will be with Toronto, I'm, I'm very skeptical. If you are pinched for something that you did untoward, illegal, um, 
assault, battery, there are a variety of things that you could um, you could come up with that you could be reprimanded or potentially terminated for at your place of employment. If you had a union, the union would probably go to battle for you. If you were able to to say your piece in front of a tribunal, you would tell that tribunal why you deserve a second chance. And you'd, you'd believe that whether you work at a telecom company or a dot-com company or a factory or whatever, you wouldn't, you wouldn't lay down your sword and, and fall on your own sword, uh, so to speak. You would, you would fight for an opportunity to redeem yourself. These guys are on the big stage. They make big money. Should Roberto Osuna not be given that opportunity? And should you, as a fan, not be given the opportunity to either support his, the, his and the Jays' decision or to not support it? Mike, last word to you. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's, 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 it's difficult to really judge. And, I, you know, I, based on the fact that the Blue Jays are owned by a major tele- telecommunications uh, company and will be very careful in terms of the public perception, um, I, I think they'll, they, they will handle this with kid gloves. And, I mean, you know, the other thing is you said he's coming to AAA Buffalo. Well, you know, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who is the star, future star of this organization that everybody is dying to see, he's probably going to be in Buffalo in, I'd say, a week to two weeks, depending on his recovery from a, a, a slight injury. Do you really think that they want Roberto Osuna and the specter that he casts with you know, his presence – in the same on the same roster in the same building as Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I don't think so. So I think that they're going to try to either, you know, maybe send him double A or whatever. But I, I just don't think they want to have the good and the bad on the same team. This is a lesson for players coming up if they choose to adhere to this lesson or understand it and, and act accordingly. It's, it's certainly up to them. But not only. Do you victimize an innocent person who does not need to be put in, in, in such a terrible situation? And that's the most important thing. But look at the fallout from that moment of weakness or that moment of vengeance or the moment of intoxication, whatever it is. And I'm not just talking about Roberto Osuna. Look at this fallout. A guy who a year ago had a camera crew down in Mexico. Now I'm talking about Osuna. A camera crew down in Mexico um, documenting his every move and sh- revealing all the, the, the garbage that he had to go through in life and where he lived and the, the, the journey to the big leagues. And now, I mean, the guy, his image is as sour as it gets. This is what happens when you don't govern yourself and ha- you handle yourself accordingly. And his Roberto Osuna's story depending on how it turns out and even whether it turns out to be a redemptive story or one of, uh, of tragedy and uh, career loss, it should serve as a, an example of, of what could happen when you, uh, you make the wrong decisions. Anyway, Mike, thanks a lot, bud. Thanks, Norman.